What's up guys, Evil Deer here, and today I want to speak about a conlang idea that I've had for quite some time. Now I've played with this idea, I've tried putting things down on paper and I basically end up wiping them out because realistically, I don't have enough experience to build this. It's going to take a myriad of people with expertise, not just in linguistics, but in different fields. So different scientific fields. Now before I dive too deeply into the idea itself, I want to talk about the history a little bit. So there's a lot of constructed languages and I've learned or I've dabbled with a lot of them. So I speak Esperanto fluently. I, I can speak a little bit of Tokipana. I've dabbled with Lojban. I've played with Klingon. I've looked at a lot of conlangs, but I'm not a person who's actually very good at creating languages. That's not my, my forte. My forte is entertainment. I'm an entertainer. That's what I do for fun. But I really, really wanted to create this idea. So here's where it came from. When I was learning Chinese, uh, or Mandarin Chinese, another language I speak, I noticed that the periodic table of elements, the characters that represented them, actually represented, if you went down into the characters, they actually represented what the elements themselves were made up of. So you've got gas and solid. So you could literally look at the character and instantly know what that that element is, or at least have a very good idea of what it is from the character without knowing anything else beyond that. And then that got me thinking, we're really not packing much information into our language. So let's have a look at English, okay? When you're a child, you natively learn English. It's just instinctive. It's just part of the process of growing. And let's say you want to learn the word for water. Your mum hands you a cup. It's got this trans lucent, transparent liquid that flush, you know, splashes around in it and then you drink it and you go, okay, well that's water. I've now associated this word water, this array of sounds, this array of jumbled random sounds with water, okay? But that's pretty much the extent of it. I That array of sounds has no meaning beyond it being an array of sounds. Now sometimes those sounds might represent suffixes or they might have some etymological like history behind them, but that's pretty much the extent of it. We're really not packing much information into the language. So let's pretend we exist in a world now where instead of learning water, there is no word, there's, the word water does not exist. Instead the child learns H2O. That's what they learn from the moment they're born. H2O is the word for water. The, re the word water doesn't exist. Then when they go to school and they sit down in their science class and the teacher says, okay, we're going to learn about the periodic table of elements today. So we're going to talk about H2O. So as you can see in this word H, that represents hydrogen. And then the kid goes, oh, oh, in fact, this word has H in it. This word, this word, this word, this word, this word. This word. Oh, I now know what hydrogen is instinctively because I know what it's associated with all the other like raw elements that exist within the world. Now obviously that's not going to work if you only build every single word off of um, those elements because those elements like obviously there's super complex things like just a human body. You're not going to make a giant string for the human body. But the idea is that every word packs some type of relevant information. So maybe the raw elements of the world pack their um, periodic table information, okay, their scientific information, their chemical information. But maybe when it comes to animals, they pack their hierarchy information. So maybe, you know, if it's a mammal, some type of suffix within the word for that animal represents that it is a mammal. Now, obviously there's problems with this because science is constantly evolving and things are changing and things are falling out and things are coming back in. But there's certain things which are pretty much established facts now. So we could include those within the language itself without the fear of going, oh, well, in one year we're going to have to scrap that. Obviously, things that are on the peripheries of this language would be constantly changing, but, you know, language evolves. That's just part of life. It happens all the time. We have mobile phones now, but they weren't called mobile phones when they first came out. Like, people call them all sorts of things. So, the idea is that these words all have scientific information packed into them. And then when it comes to the time for the kid to go to school, because imagine the kid learns this language natively, every single word has some type of scientific information packed into it. When he goes to school and he sits down in class, instead of the teacher going, okay, we're going to route, learn, memorize all these concepts, 
Instead, the teacher goes, okay, let's pick apart the language you speak. So this is the word for cat. This is the word for dog. As you can see, they share the same suffix, which means they're a mammal. You now know what a mammal is because every single animal you've already learned before you got to school or the majority you have. So you can determine directly from the word itself that this is a mammal. It's something you don't have to learn anymore. You don't have to learn, well, a mammal produces milk and it does this and it does that. Obviously, there's going to be weird things where like something belongs to multiple groups and, and as a community we would have to decide how to deal with these scenarios but my idea is that if we did this well enough if we packed the information well enough and it was creative enough we could create a language that would literally create a generation of geniuses because you would have kids entering school who are no longer having to route learn a whole heap of scientific information or even mathematic information you could pack that into the language you, you wouldn't have to learn that anymore because it's already instinctive, it's part of their language, it's part of who they are. Then it just comes down to unpacking that information and learning how to use it. You already see the associations because it's all associated for all the words you speak. Now you just gotta unpack it and use it. So you basically cut down the amount of learning time you'd need to do by like 50% because 50% of learning is basically just learning the damn words and what they mean. And then 50% of the time is, okay, now that I've learned those words, how do I utilize them? So it would cut down a massive amount of learning. So the idea would be to create a language packed heavily with scientific, mathematical, cosmic, whatever information, information that would be useful for basically all foreseeable time. And then you would pass it on to like kids, like on to the next generation as like a, a dual language. So they'd speak their native language plus this language. So that's basically the idea laid out. I hope I like expressed that good enough. I know there's been attempts at languages that categorize things before, but they've never really been based on anything scientific. So I thought as a community, what we could do is we could all come together and go, okay, let's do this. Um, we're going to set down some rules. Maybe this is going to be some type of demographic, uh, not demographic, some um, democratic type system. Maybe it's going to work for GitHub, for Facebook groups, for polls. But the idea is that I would basically try and learn this language as we build it and I could experiment with it because I love le learning languages and learning useless stuff. So I would basically take what the community's building, put it into practice and then we could see, mm, yeah, no, that doesn't really work. Yes, that works well. And then over time, as we formulate this thing and we become to a consensus about what the language should look like, then we'd go, okay, there's going to be this period of like review. And then after that, this is the core of the language. We don't change it anymore, but we let the language evolve from that point. Kind of follow the, the Esperanto structure where there was like this period of like evolution and then boom, that's the cutoff. We have the foundation of the language. Now we move into the evolution stage and the utilizing of this language. Maybe that would take 10 years. I don't know, but that was basically the idea. Now I uploaded it to this channel because this is totally separate to what I do in the Esperanto community. I don't see this as like a competitor to Esperanto in any way. I see this as something that might make the human race um, more evolved in a sense because we would come with so much knowledge from the cradle to school. Anyway, that was the idea. Maybe this will completely fall apart. Maybe it won't even work altogether because, you know, maybe in two generations we're all going to be cyborgs and information will be downloaded directly into our brains. Totally possible. But hey, Seems like a pretty cool idea with me. Let me know in the comments. If you think anyone's interested, share this video with them. I'll see you all in the next video.